Heroes. My name is Ray. I am one of your three regular hosts, and I'm joined by the other two, believe it or not. Ryan? Hi. Hi. I Dad. believe it. Hi. <laughs> How are it's, you guys doing? It's crazy. It's just it's so crazy being here together. It's insane. It's almost like... We do this every week. We've done this almost 150 times. Almost. 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 All right. So tonight we'll be talking The Punisher season two. Or so far we've reviewed almost every season of the Netflix shows, with the exception of the Jessica Jones ones. And uh, yeah, we didn't want to fall behind on this one, so we sure. binged 11.5 hours of content. Apparently. Point five six. All right, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we had more than a week to do it this time. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I know you guys were binging some other shows in there, but I had a little yep. bit more time than you did. So. You did, yeah. We're trying to give ourselves a bit more time and give our viewers a bit more time. You know, everybody has spoilers the very next day, and we want to avoid that. We want to review it at a normal time. So we're going to talk about that. Of course, as always, we're talking news first, so... Box office numbers, Glass took the weekend again, Aquaman in third, and The Upside in second. So, you know... Um, not an exciting weekend, really. No. No, it's not. Uh, but speaking of Aquaman, it's Across now... Crossed the uh, billion dollar mark, I yeah, think, right? And it's, uh, it's up there. It's officially the highest grossing DC movie, right? Not just DCEU. DC, right. of yeah, all time. Past Dark Knight Rises and Dark Knight... And all the yeah, all the Christian Bale Batman movies and yeah. everything. Dark Knight Rises was number one because surprisingly, well, it got the sequel effect right. The Dark yeah. Knight was amazing, just like you know Spider Man three. Spider Man two was amazing. Everyone goes to see the next one, right? So that's exactly. how it goes. But congrats to Aquaman. We all thoroughly enjoyed the movie. We nitpicked it a while ago, so you can listen to that. They did episode. not get nominated for the Anything. visual effects Oscar, which, which is kind of surprising. Sucks. We talked about that a little bit last yeah. week too. So, but hey, Christopher Robin did. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the Aquaman, a good segue, I guess. Black Panther is going to be released in select AMC theaters for in celebration of Black History Month. It is free showing so you can go reserve your seat online and that that'll get you in that's it's pretty it. cool and they're yeah. donating i think like 1.5 million dollars to some some uh, charity charity yeah. that's fantastic it's, it's a really nice thing they're doing so i love that i'd like to see some other theaters get on board with that yeah but that'd be nice unfortunately no other theaters really have the uh the reach of AMC, I suppose. So. Well, even if what they did was release a few movies into theaters, so even if, like, Alamo or um, B&B released one movie in theaters a month where all the proceeds go to a, a charity, I'd probably go see that movie if I backed the charity, you know? Right? Yeah, I'd I love think to so. spend money. That is fair. All right, so next up, um, let's talk Birds of Prey. Sure. Sure. We got some stuff. Yeah, that... Um, Things happened. <laughs> everybody's calling it a teaser, and Ryan and I are getting so frustrated by it, because it's not a not teaser. Even close. It's a screen test. Guys, they just started shooting on January 14th. Like, yeah, they're not going to have a teaser by now. They released the screen test because they knew that... On every movie, there's people around the set shooting photos, yeah. and there's already photos of the set that, that released today of Harley. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's that's all it was. It, it gave nothing to the plot. You got literally nothing except some some, some, shots of some good and some bad costumes, and you know. And the costumes, like screen tests, are not the final dress rehearsal, no. guys. Like it's. These costumes are going to be changed up. I bet you anything that's a party outfit for Harley and not, like, her official costume. Like, Look, I just want to invite you guys to my support group because Star Trek Discovery went through this <laughs> at San Diego Comic-Con when they showed the flight test footage of the ship and everybody lost their damn minds. Well, I think the difference here <laughs> is that I don't... I haven't seen a ton of negative on this. Most of the stuff I've seen has been pretty positive. Yeah, it's just people don't 
we talked about this before where we've started just we have so much more knowledge these days of the production process yeah. than we did 10 or 20 30 years ago so the idea of seeing screen tests ahead of a release rather than in the special features isn't is relatively new right so they're pe- just excited and they didn't want crap like what happened with titans to in shazam yeah. yeah yeah thing is people see behind the scenes photos and they immediately get really upset um, I just, I want people to calm their expectations. Like, these aren't, these aren't even their final forms. Like, bring it down a notch. Yeah, I mean, they kind of, <laughs> even just when you see, like, Huntress, you mm-hmm. see two different, there's two different costumes there, obviously. Yeah. You see, like, the one with, like, a trench coat, where you only see, like, the waist to the knees. And then another one where she's wearing no trench coat, and it's got, like, the bare midriff and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, you already got two costumes for her. Harley, we see in the whatever, the party costume, or whatever you might think it is, and then there's another costume that we saw on the set today that is completely ridiculous looking, <laughs> and not at all like the comic books. Right. Black Canary, you get barely anything. Like her hair. You get her hair, and they made her blonde. There was and... like a silhouette, too, where yeah. you could kind of see something, and she's holding a microphone, so they're going with the singer background. Um, which I'm okay with, too. Yeah, it's... which was, I thought that was great. Yeah. yeah. Um... Not everybody needs to be a skilled martial artist that can take down ninjas. I mean, I think she still could be. Like, it's... Yeah, I think that it's just... uh, Isn't it Dinah? Yeah, my favorite part about Dinah is the origin story where she started out as the performer and learned fighting as she got more into her vigilanteism. Instead of, you know, she learned the fighting and just so happened to develop superpowers. Yeah. So... Well, it's Dinah Drake, right? That's the singer background. Yeah. That was yeah. not uh, the OG Black Canary. Right. So I don't know. I'm not as familiar with Dinah Drake, so I don't know if she was a martial artist ahead of time. I assume that's what, you know. She you may be about. eventually. I don't know. I do like the, you know, Black Canary from the comics. That was yeah. like, as good as Batman, <laughs> pretty much, in terms of martial artist ability. So, you know, I'm kind of hoping they go somewhere out with that. But Oh, yeah. I hope she has some fighting skills. I just like that. You know, not everybody has to be this elite task force. Like, we can have other True. angles. Black Mask doesn't wear his mask, so that's fun. Oh, no! Yeah, Victor fine, Zaz guys. doesn't have any uh, scars anywhere. Or Zazzles. He's just a dude that Sorry. looks like he came from a Eddie Bauer outlet. <laughs> that's a great way to put that. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Man, I don't even know what to say about that. At Gotham, on Gotham, uh, the TV show, Victor Zaz is probably my favorite character on there. Oh, he's, really? He's so, like, the, the actor <laughs> is perfect, and he's yeah. hilarious. It's hilariously written. Uh, so the, going from that to this was like, what is Rick. happening? Rick. <laughs> so. It was so quick. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, the fact that, like, in, in order to see anything, you basically have to... shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, and it was all shadowed. Like, yeah. And they did that for a reason, too, guys. <laughs> it, calling it a teaser, in even in itself, is very generous. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, the, you know, the sizzle reel we got of the Justice League movie at San Diego Comic-Con was more of a teaser than this is. And I bet sure. you anything will get a trailer or a teaser or more behind the scenes at SDCC this year. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. that'll be so much closer. Because they'll be done filming by then. Filming yeah. for most movies take, like, three months. Maybe they'll be at reshoots by then. I'm not as... I I'm weird, feel weird about this movie. Like, I, I love Black Canary. One, probably my favorite female comic book character. Uh, and Huntress is cool. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not as familiar, but... Uh, I just feel like the whole thing is going to be, they're going to be second fiddle to Harley. And just like Suicide Squad, you had the yeah. two characters that were everything. And then these other more interesting characters were barely touched. And I'm worried that that's what's going to happen with this, too. Well, a team that's of three fair. is much easier to balance, at least. Sure, um, but then when your villain, it, you know, is is Black Mask, played by... Uh, yeah, Obi Wan Obi Wan Kenobi. Kenobi. <laughs> you know, it's just gonna no, be. You're, look, I'm apprehensive of these these uh, other DC projects. I'm gonna call them Birds of Prey, Joker, because they don't seem to necessarily fall in line with what the other movies are doing. But at least this one's DC EU, technically, right? Uh, okay, so that so the DC EU isn't a thing anymore. It's right? the world it's, of DC. It's the worlds of DC, and that includes the Joker movie, but the Joker movie's in a different timeline. Oh my god, I hate this. Can right? we move but on? But that, that's my problem, though, right? Like, so like, it's it's just very convoluted, and I keep seeing all these articles about how, like, you know, 
DC learned not to copy Marvel and other studios should listen. And like, at what point did Marvel do any of this convoluted nonsense to begin with? (laughs) Like, you know, I don't think DC, the closest DC has been to copying Marvel was Aquaman. Yeah. Right. Which also is their most successful movie financially. So I don't think these people are really doing their homework. Um, So I'm a little just apprehensive because these seem like, the Joker movie and Birds of well, Prey seem like afterthoughts. Birds of Prey like has this 30 second screen test and there's clickbait articles like 20 reasons why Birds of Prey will be the best DC movie ever. <laughs> like, and man, seven why it won't. Go zip your dick up in your pants. Like I, this I is promise ridiculous. Re- none of those articles will ever be on this website. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Well then it takes 20 seconds just to say the title of the movie. Yeah. Which... That's well, not I, official title. I actually think like she just wrote that on there. I don't think the emancipation of the fantabulous Harley Quinn is the rest of it. I mean, everybody's I running you, it like it's a real the, title. I bet you that'll be the title on the unrated Blu-ray that releases. But the that's the, funny. The I theater like version will be Birds of Prey. <laughs> Thank God. I, if they do that long title. Uh, well, anyway. then you know they'll have a separate semicolon. I write sins, not tragedies. Oh and yeah. Then you know that's true. Part two. Just keep going. Electric Part two, movie. section two, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, another movie though that is getting a sequel this year. It's Zombieland Double Tap. We it's... know the title and yeah. we got a cool poster. I didn't we know did. that title, so how I missed that. But... So they it was did the poster. The, they did I saw the, the poster, but I guess I didn't challenge. notice that. Oh. They did the ten year challenge. They recreated the poster, and the only great. one that looks different is Abigail Breslin. <laughs> yeah, because she looks like child. an adult now. Yeah. I thought when I first saw it, I thought it was a joke because I thought it was just the same poster twice. Because <laughs> I, I assumed it wasn't real. I didn't think it was actually coming from them. Right. Right. And it ended up being from Sony. But... So I guess the movie is a real time sequel. Like yes. it's yes. that many years later. Yeah, it's a real time ten years I think later. It all survive for a decade. And I guess we'll find out. There's supposed real. to be. All new, different types of zombie creatures. All that new rules. We're, we're gonna see. Seems like the, that's this is the year of those like real time sequels. I mean, Glass yeah. just did the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's true. I mean, yeah. this really is the tenth not anniversary, a thing. Uh, you know, of of Zombieland, and I think that you know, I, they've admitted it was very much on purpose, and I think that that probably around you know seven or eight years after the original, they're like, well, we'll just shoot for ten. <laughs> Well, we had that Amazon show. Amazon picked it up and tried to have a show, but everybody wanted the original cast, and there's no way all four of them are going to come back and do... For a TV show. For a TV show. Yeah, yeah, together. They've got too much going on. A scheduling would be difficult for all of them, you know? None of them, I think, are above doing a TV show because I think Woody Harrelson, um, he did the first season Cheers. of... Well, <laughs> That, that, that little sit- I, mean, yeah. true, <laughs> that thing. I was talking about True Detective, oh, so that okay. was slightly more recent. <laughs> right. And then Abigail Reslin was on Scream Queen, so I don't think, <clears throat> and you know, Emma Stone just did Maniac, so I don't think any of them would have a problem doing a TV show, but getting the four of them back together for scheduling would probably be really I don't think really it would difficult. fit in Amazon's budget, yeah. probably. No, probably not. And yeah. that's the thing, like, to your point, right? Like, we just, we wanted to see these characters. It yeah. wasn't, the world wasn't what recast. we fell in love with. It was the characters that we fell in love with. Right. Well, you know? that, so I did a playwriting class when I was in college, and it said that any cast that has five, uh, three to five characters could easily be adapted to a movie or a play from one medium to the other and I actually think that because of the nature of Zombieland they could have a stage play with it and it would just be pretty fantastic so like people the musical exactly like it doesn't have to be Zombieland the musical it could just be a, a play but that would be fun you though. know a small cast you can make it tight and interesting and you don't even have to have a lot of extras now there's there's a lot of rumors about possible cameos. We do have one confirmed new cast member, and she was called a cast member. Rosario Dawson was cast in the movie, so I'm gonna guess that she is part of a something serious. Yeah. you know she's not a cameo. We do Unlike have Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd mm-hmm. that are cameos. so they're not confirmed according to what I've been reading. Um, That's sad. I don't That's know sad. how Bill Murray could be in it. We already answered this for you. Yeah, he could be a zombie. <laughs> no, but I, I know that. But like, it's been ten years. Are they really at the, in the exact same spot? Maybe he could travel. <laughs> he could travel. He's going in after ten them. years. He finally reached Columbus, Ohio. That's right. So this is like Jaws: The Revenge, exactly. Like, with a zombie. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> That's a bit better. Yeah. Come on. 
All right. Uh, Bo Peep <clears throat> got a teaser. Everybody kept saying Bo Peep was back for Toy Story 4, and she is. She got is that her... a big deal? I guess because people were a little bummed that they just wrote her off in 3 without explaining anything, and then now she's back, and bless those fucking cosplayers out there. They figure that it's not a new outfit. It's her actual undergarments, and her cape that she's wearing is her former dress, and... It's just really right. clever. Those, those cosplaying assholes can figure anything out. It's pretty incredible. But yeah, it was very quick. She does this little pole dance on her uh, shepherd's crook, and that's it. You know, <laughs> well, that's kind of a weird way of putting it. Oh, uh, that's what it is. Um, no, I, I'm kind of in the boat of, of the people who were just kind of curious what happened to her. I mean, yes, we know that it was but Andy's you weren't, sister's like, offended toy. Offended by the writing choices. I wasn't offended by, it. of course not, but it was more of just. She's one of the few female characters in Toy Story. There aren't that many, and she just disappears after having a, a kind of a relationship start to to bud, right? And then she's gone. So I just hope that Annie Potts is back playing her. You know, that seemed it'd be pretty crappy to recast. They've they've always tried to get the original voice actors, you know, when they could. So I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case. All right, so last bit of news. We're all very disappointed in this, but, you know, the world is ending, so we don't. Funko Pops are getting their own movie, and it's going to include Star Wars, Marvel, and DC characters, apparently. You're welcome. Just want to throw this that out. This is Derek that wrote this. So, Derek is getting co-writing I, I pitched this, this idea. Back in 2015, uh, when we first... 2016. Like, no, 2015. She like, looked it up. Episode four of our podcast, or would, something would, like would that. Would have been in twenty sixteen. I don't think so. Okay. It it was probably at the end, dude. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> you want to be petty and go look at it, then we'll break up later tonight. Look. Anyway, <laughs> I had this amazing idea of having a live action Funko thing, and look, now it's happening, and we don't get any money from it. So you know, that's on you guys for not liking and supporting my idea. Well, everybody steals our ideas. It's fine. Whatever. One bit of news that we didn't have on the uh, cheat sheet ahead of time was they gave a release date for the Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Oh, right. July 10th, 2020, I think it was. I thought it was 7th. 7th? Seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah, it's sometime in no, July 2020. 20. That's not, I that doesn't know. sound right. 7 10. It, it's sometime in July 2020. I think it's the 5th. I think it's oh 7 5 2020. Um, but, you know, people are kind of freaking out online because they think that it's going to not be enough time and that's going to be rushed. I don't think so. I think if they cast soon, they can start filming soon. Like we said earlier, filming only takes uh, two to three months for certain films. And, you know, you go, you do a lot of edits, you do a screen test in front of the studio, and then you do reshoots, and then you edit again, and then it's out. Like, that's the process can be streamlined. If they start shooting before the end of may i think they're on track for a july 2020 release um it's july 10th i just like i said i double checked for us so you're right um it i mean it is a shorter time than we're used to but we're also not used to these massive blockbusters that have just insane sets and incredible special effect needs and, and things of that nature a ghostbusters film doesn't necessarily have to call for that yeah. You know, the, the scale can be smaller. The The needs of those special effects could be more realistic. We're also not privy <laughs> to what's going on at Sony. So, I mean, you have to remember that the, the movie got announced, right? And then the next day, a teaser was out. And then the next week, they gave a release date. So it seems likely that they probably had the, pro- the wheels, the cogs turning, as, you, as so to speak. Um, yeah. So, you know, they may already have casting. We, I we don't know. They may already do. have a script. I don't know, but hey, Iron Man didn't need a script, so <laughs> <laughs> well, unless they're casting, you know, the comedic geniuses that they did in the original movie, they probably need a script. If it's a bunch of kids, like they said it was going to, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I was just making a joke, yeah, but I get it. Um, I, I think it's doable to do it in that time frame. You know, Zombieland Two got about the same amount of time. From what I understand, uh, we haven't seen that yet, obviously, so I, I guess we might find out whether or not that was enough time. Right. <laughs> but uh, Or it could still get delayed before then, we don't know. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, it's always possible. 
I mean, I movies don't, think... don't get delayed that much, like unless it's an X Men film, obviously. Yeah, right. <laughs> but other movies tend to st- like once we have posters and, and release dates, they tend to stick. Alita got delayed. You know, uh, Alita did get pushed, absolutely. But that was more of, from what I understand, it to be more of a scheduling problem yeah. rather than a movie. The movies they're up against. You know, like why why release with five other big films when you don't have to, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So, anyway. All right, so I guess the only bit of news left is to let you know what's coming out this week. No big blockbusters, no major releases. Uh, The Extreme Job, Braid, uh, Who Will Write Our History, small movies. So take it in indie flick this weekend if you don't have any other plans. Otherwise, binge some stuff at home. I have one small thing to add. So Ray has been nice enough to compile a list of all of our playlists That's true. on the show. So the different kind of series that we do. Our DCEU, the Fill Our Holes reviews, that type of stuff. And so I am slowly putting those playlists together for everybody on the website. So if you go to heroespodcasts.com right now and go under the, the menu where Screen Heroes is, you will see two playlists right now that you can go check out. Our DCEU and fill our holes and I will add to those as we do more of those because we the two shortest ones well I wanted to make sure I had the format down before I did one of the really long ones so uh, we'll have ones for fan castings we'll have one for reviews there's a few others so I'll be rolling those out but just wanted to thank Ray for her hard work because she already did all the, the hard leg work I just have to put the articles together so it's true I'm awesome but if you you know if you liked our DCEU or your, you specifically like our retro reviews, those playlists will give you a specific spot to go look and the order that we did them in, in case you care. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back in a moment. Hey everyone, this is Greg from Red Shirts and Runabouts. We're the resident Star Trek podcast as part of the Heroes Podcast Network group. If you love Star Trek and things science fiction, we're definitely the show for you. Join us every Thursday as we talk about Star Trek Discovery, the new Picard show, and other ongoing content and new creations from the Star Trek universe. If you want to find us, search Red Shirts and Runabouts podcast on Apple and Google Play. And if you want to interact with us as a host, you can find us at Red Shirts Pod on Twitter. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that quick little break. Got some coffee, went pee, you know, did your... Your normal you thing. You got a lot done during that break. Right? Jeez. I made yeah. a pizza. They probably did all of that at the same time, drinking coffee while peeing and... Why? That's just called efficiency. Yeah. Right. Cut out the middle, man. <laughs> Fair enough. Your digestive system. It does. All right. Let's talk about The Punisher, guys. So, Punisher Season 2 has been out for two and a half weeks now and plenty of time to watch 13 episodes, guys. Why are you slacking? Just if Derek it. and Rachel could do it, then... For real, if we could do no it. No excuse. Um, no word yet if it's going to be canceled. That's Which usually we would, have, we would have heard, based on the other shows, we would have heard by now, probably. But, I mean, I still think it's going to be canceled. It's right. just weird that they're pushing it so far. No, I'm with you. I... Fully well expected us to be able to talk about that. The cancellation. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little surprised. Netflix did a little bit more advertising. The writers said that they have uh, a plan for season three if it gets uh, Which seems renewed. surprising based on this season, but we'll uh-huh. get into that. Like, well, they want to bring in Wilson Fisk. And just a one episode in season two of Daredevil where Punisher and Fisk were around each other, they had very intense chemistry and just seeing two hyper violent people could make for a very brutal yet interesting season so yeah but it's doing something... doing this punisher with that fisk and no daredevil seems difficult to write and make sense i don't think it's difficult to write and make sense i just think i would miss daredevil yeah and i, I think it's worth mentioning that since we we're talking about the netflix shows being canceled and everything that daredevil did just win two awards i think it won mm-hmm. like net best netflix series or something like that yeah and it's won, it won a couple other awards um so it seems unlikely that they would keep punisher and get rid of daredevil that's why i'm confused right like if you were going to keep a show wouldn't it have been daredevil your you longest think. running most successful one i agree that you already have had basically every character looped in on so you could bring them in if you wanted to yeah right if you had to cancel the Punisher for some reason. Daredevil you can bring him back on Daredevil, yeah. right? He's he's kind 
connected and met every single other character and exactly like i think we all miss claire temple at this point so. nah, not really really you don't i, don't. I mean oh. I, I love rosario dawson so it's nothing about her it's more of just I, she wouldn't have been needed well in season three no i'm just saying like there's no reason why they couldn't write her in there yeah they, they could, shoehorn karen page in every single well that's the, right they could they could bring her back i just it's confusing it's weird at this point yeah. that you wouldn't just tell people yeah so, on the major aggregate sites, this season didn't do as well as last season, but it's still really high up there on IMDb. It got an 8.6 instead of last year's 9.4. Rotten Tomatoes, it actually failed. It was considered uh, certified rotten at 58%, which is more than half, so I don't know how that's certified rotten. You have to be below 60. Got it. And Metacritic is 55. Metacritic is actually the harshest if you want to go look at their stuff they scale things down really really low so i think that's kind of the highest that the netflix shows have but overall you guys want to talk about how you liked or disliked stuff before we get into nitty-gritty details of episodes just what was your overall impression of this season no spoilers not at this time we'll do spoilers in just a second okay um there were parts of it that i really thought were interesting uh the acting was good i like the characters i thought they I, I think at this point it's just gone too far in the amount of gory violence that is depicted so often in this season it just went beyond anything i really want to watch anymore got it just on a personal level and that's, that's not, not not a quality statement it's a personal just i don't really want to watch that anymore right uh, I don't have any problem with the violence. The Punisher is a violent character that's basically been his entire backstory, so I would go into a show expecting that kind of violence. Yeah. Um, I would say that this show, this, this series, this season was not as good as as the first season, mm -hmm. um, which was disappointing. Um, it was a lot more superficial. Yes. Um, but but John Bernthal chewed the scenery up. I mean, he was every scene he was in for me was just. I mean, it was. Punisher. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a couple other characters that I didn't find as as appealing, but um, for over the overall, I think the acting was good. It was not bad. I mean, it was not the worst of the Netflix series. It was probably yeah. in the lower half for me, but um, there were things about it I really liked. I mean, if you're yeah. a Punisher fan, or if you just like the MC or the Netflix MCU, the NMCU, I guess, um, then you know you should watch it for sure. Um, I have a question before we dive into things like that. Rachel hasn't said what she thought of it yet. Okay. No, that's right. fine. Go You're ahead. You're right. You haven't. When was this supposed to take place? No, I forgot to look it the up. The Netflix shows are kind of all... They're, they're, they don't really give you... Are you talking about in relation to the other Netflix shows? Yeah. I mean, they don't really... There was nothing okay. saying. Okay. So I kind of ha had it in my head that uh, it took place about a year after the stuff in the season yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, Karen... Okay. Pay. Well, I don't want to spoil Donnie anything. Donnie needed to completely heal from a bullet to the head. And, and Karen got asked about another character. Yeah. And she didn't. She, yeah. She, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. I don't want to get into spoilers. No, 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 no that's good. Show. That's good. That's good. I, I meant to double check before we started. I, I think forgot. it was about a year in between. Okay. All right. So, uh, spoiler warning from here on out. Pause it, come back to us, and let us know exactly what you think if you haven't watched all 13 episodes because all 13 are on the table from this point on so let's let's start episode one he's pete castiglione he is castiglione in, <laughs> he's in uh which is a the same bar name. in michigan he actually had that same name i believe at the beginning of season one when he was he the construction worker and i do think it's important to say at this point also that derek did not watch season one not all of season one you We're did gonna, watch some of it. I watched the first like three or four episodes. Okay, We're well, I just reference. I think that's things. important because yeah. so like he was. I, I saw him as a construction worker. I saw which him I meet, thought was great. That I was saw awesome. him meet Micro. Um, I saw. I saw. I saw the first few episodes, and then I had some business trips, and you guys had to watch it without me, and I never went back. Right. So. Okay. Well, I just thought that was important yeah. because you can't really dive into the second episode, season of most shows and be like, "This is awesome," you know. No, but I, I really honestly feel like they did a pretty damn good job of letting somebody be comfortable with what was okay. going on with the characters. I never felt lost. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, so I will say the show had that going for it, yeah. which um, I, I don't think I've ever done that with a show jumped in on, on a later season. 
um, at least not on purpose. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I appreciate that. I really knew what was happening, but it also felt like season one wrapped up most things in a way that was easy to explain. So yeah, well, yeah, but there are some twists that are in season one that are now ruined for you. Well, sure. Watching season yeah, two, yeah, you know, yeah. but that's okay. Which is unfortunate. I think it's a little unfortunate, but you know, we do what we have to do for the podcast. I understand yeah. it. So, I only have so much, so much right. to watch. I know. <laughs> do you think after watching this, you'd want to go back and finish, or do you think you're done with Punisher for a while? Well, forever because it's going to get canceled. <laughs> It'll be rebooted at some point. Um, no, That's I mean, I, I'm curious about the rest of season one for for two main reasons. One, most people are saying that season one was better than season two, so it makes me want to watch season one. Also, two people that you care about deeply have said that it's possibly the fa- best of the Netflix shows. So, fair enough. And two, Those people are us. By yeah, the way. in you case guys? you weren't sure. Uh, and two, everybody really has nothing but good things to say about Micro. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah, he's not in this. Rachel season loved all, Micro, right? so did I. So yeah. I mean, so I kind of want to see that because it's pretty rare that people have that much positive stuff to say about a side character on these shows. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, with maybe the exception of like Foggy. Right, um, you know, you know what? too a soon. Lot more... Don't bring it up. <laughs> There's a lot of hate out there for Foggy. Well, those I... people are wrong. <laughs> I didn't realize Quack. it. Quack. Stop it! <laughs> Every time I mention Foggy, he could have mighty ducks. Well, you know, he started anyway. three movies. Anyway, <laughs> I uh, I would like to I, I would like to go back and, and okay. finish season one at some point. That's fair. When we don't have to constantly binge stuff, so yeah. you know, after I'm dead. Right. <laughs> All right. So episode one is pretty much him and Beth getting to know each other at the bar, and our introduction to Rachel slash Amy slash the people who are after her. Right. Right. So Beth was cool. I, I actually I really liked the beginning of this season quite a bit. I kind of wish we had had a little more time with him, like, kind of on the road, maybe seeing him in a couple other towns before he meets Beth would have been interesting just to kind of see where he is at this particular point. His nomadic lifestyle. Yeah. See, I, I kind of disagree. I think that I, I love the stuff with Beth. It was very humanizing for a character that, through the, for the rest of the season, had moments of where he was... <laughs> clearly a superhuman or something else yes. we'll get but, to um, that <laughs> I, I i think that when you're watching a punisher show <laughs> if there's not punishing happening i think if they had two episodes of him just driving around that wouldn't be just to cities around. and going to bars then that no, would probably not i'm gonna be... meet you both in the middle i wanted to see more of his interaction with beth now if he just visited her in the hospital to say, I'm so sorry this happened to you. And didn't he visit her in the hospital? He did not. Pilgrim did. He did that not. was a oh, creepy okay. freaking scene, by the way. He didn't go see her in the no. hospital. He pretended that, you know, they left. They He dropped her off in the ambulance, and that was it. And um, so I would have liked to see more of Beth uh, because what they did with her was so cool. I liked the split up you know mixed in a sex scene versus conversation after you know they're getting to know each other they're having a really intimate moment with each other it, it was, is very believable like yeah. you thought these characters i mean i don't i don't know who the actress that played beth was but you know john bernthal um was great and she was great and you really felt like this was kind of like this awkward mm-hmm. thing that just happened between two people because we i mean i'm not saying we've all had casual sex but we've all been in positions where we're talking to somebody that we don't really know that well yeah. and, and, you know, maybe spent some time with that person in a, in a way that you don't normally spend with people. And it's, uh, you know, it was very real. It felt yeah. very real. And I think that's one thing that I like about the Punisher shows in general, the Punisher show in general, over the other Netflix shows. It feels more real. You know, the Punisher is not a superhero. Right. He doesn't have an iron fist. He doesn't, you know. I think that's why I like the beginning a lot because it, it did humanize him. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'm... I'm a character person. I'm a dialogue person. And that, that scene you're talking about, Ray, I feel like was this really well shot, well edited scene. And then those techniques, that sophistication is never seen again on the on the. There season. were some other scenes, but not a lot, certainly. Not during dialogue. It was all action scenes, I think, that they yeah. were shot interestingly. And but... there were some good action sequences. That, that scene makes me really happy because, one, it gets out exposition. It kind of sums up some parts from season one. 
in a natural progression and it wasn't just like hey audience i'm talking to you right now this is what happened and <laughs> you know it wasn't a direct it wasn't forced exposition exactly yeah, for sure and then also you and i discussed this a little bit right after i had watched it we all know that frank is a good person who does bad things and there's part of us that wants him to have some sort of happy ending so they kind of tease us just a little bit. Like, this is what Frank looks like as a happy, relaxed, calm person. And I liked it. I did, too. I really did. John Bernthal seems like the kind of guy you would be mm -hmm. cool with just sitting down with and chatting with, you yeah. know? And, and I, I believe to that. My, my problem with, with, with some of that is, yeah, we want to see him have the happy ending because he's a good guy who's been put in terrible situations. But in this season... Pretty much every terrible situation he's in is a decision he's made to put himself in. Absolutely. He rushes into the fire. like so. Uh, it's not like bad things just happening to him. No. You know what he's I mean? He's not Spider-Man. The world doesn't hate him. <laughs> well, but like in the first season, though, like what happens to his family, you know, is something that's really terrible that he didn't, you know, choose to do that he wasn't actively making happen, right? And now he wants retribution for that. That's season one. That makes sense. I get it. But now it just all felt like we have to come up with reasons for him to fight people. I get that. Yeah. And I know that's the character, right? But it just, it felt a little forced early on. Right. That's all. I'm, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't know where he's going with that. Okay, okay, so like like the Amy so, character, right? Rachel, as she is in the beginning of the season, right? He's just so into protecting her and... I mean, until really close to the end of the season, I really could not have cared less well, about I mean, that character. You, you might not have been, you know, you couldn't have cared less, but the, the whole char that character is supposed to be his, basically his daughter, you I know? know. And like a, he sees his daughter in this character, and, and, you know, they didn't really do a great job of that, of making that feel across. I never really liked her in the first few episodes, and I didn't. I mean, she got better, I think, but <laughs> but it wasn't great. She didn't improve. She never got to a point where I empathized with her. It all seemed like you brought this on yourself to a certain degree. Now, I'm not saying all of her friends deserve to die for a small con job. Like, that's excessive. But, you know, you live that life. There are some dangers that come with it. So She just wasn't a likable character. She Especially not in the beginning. She right. got better. But. She won me over towards the end when she has to actually start using a weapon and she's really freaking out. And When she kills the guy, the first person. That was, I was like, yes. okay. Yeah. Because then she, she, then she finally felt like a human being for a minute. Because yeah. everything before that, I never knew if I could believe a word out of her mouth. Everything she said was probably a lie. But I think that was intended. I, think that... I know, but the entire crux of the season is that Punisher is protecting her. And like, I I was done with him doing that. I, I was bored with it. It wasn't. It didn't seem like it was worth his time. In the end, I think this season kind of failed its female characters. I don't know if they quite knew what to do with him because... Their motives were always off, back and forth. They would flip-flop on certain things, and they would display certain personality traits, but have contrary actions. So I don't think there was any th female writers to help with that. I think that you're, you're right for the first half of the season. I think that, like, Madani was, I couldn't, I was not doing well with Madani right? in the whole like, first part of the awful. season. She and... got a lot better towards the end. You know, when she started putting pieces together. I'm like, okay, but she's like a, a Homeland Security episode, person. And this is very obvious. That was episode 11. Like, why did sure. you she's, get She was getting better. She was getting better up before that. But I, I feel like, you know, it definitely she wasn't up to the season one caliber. Because I loved her in season one. Oh, yeah, and, she was awesome. You know, even the, the little girl, whatever her name we're going with for her. She, we'll, uh, we'll go with Amy. Okay. Even Amy. though they never explicitly say it. And you just see it in the blurbs. Uh, I mean, Amy was also yeah. bad at the beginning. She, yeah. she tells him her real name is Amy. Really? Yeah. yeah. Where? When? I, I mean, it's it in the later. second half of the season. Yeah, she tells it was later she on. Tells right. Frank it was in the she trailer, tells her, I think. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah. But, it, like, she got better towards the end of the season, too. And, she I mean, did. that's a different kind of female. I mean, she's female, obviously, but it's a different <laughs> kind of female character. It's not like an yeah. adult female character that's, you know, right. it's going to be somebody that a kid looks up to or something. This is, you know, Madani. I thought the psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever she was was... She should have stayed on Supergirl. That was a... Is that where I knew her from? She was Maggie Sawyer. She was the cop? 
Okay. That I was like, she looks really familiar, yeah. and I couldn't remember where it was from. My, my big problem with the two of them was, first with Madani. Two of who? Madani and Dumont. Okay. With Madani, she clearly has some PTSD or other psychological issues from what happened. Yeah. And I think that that's totally that's normal. Yeah. But what's not normal is that as a Homeland Security officer, none of her superiors give a shit. Right. She's allowed <laughs> to just do whatever she wants. So, so Rafi does. He tells her to call her mom. He tells her to go through more counseling. Why didn't he put her on medical leave? Exactly. Or, or exactly. It's, it's a government program. You can force her to go through mandatory therapy if you think she's unstable before you give her her gun and badge back. Yeah. Like that's that's pretty normal stuff, right? So like nobody did that, even though they know that she's going and visiting Billy every day. Twice, twice a day, morning and night. I mean, if anything, like that also borderlines on harassing the guy with amnesia who doesn't even know what happened yet. Like, mm-hmm. like he still does have rights, as even though he's the villain, right? And then with Dumont, so okay, so Billy kills a couple of officers, right? There's blood and things like that. She's totally unharmed. She's the only survivor from that. And nobody's checking up on her. She's not a person of interest. There's no suspicion that he may have had help since there's no forced exit anywhere else in in the building. Just felt way too convenient that it took until like episode 11 for Madani to finally be like, wait a minute. Of all people. And like Mahoney, who we've seen in Daredevil. Oh yeah. Like they Harley Quinned her up and they were not at all subtle with it. Episode three, I'm watching the way she's looking at him, and I was like, "This." They're bitch. gonna fuck, yeah. It's... Uh, Mah- Mahoney was great. Like was he, good. I loved him in Daredevil, mm-hmm. and I think in this series, I kind of wish they would. I don't know. I wish they would have dialed back a storyline somewhere to give him more of a more of a conflict. Because right, the way they did him, he came across as like dickhead cop that just yeah. wants to shut down Punisher, right? And when Punisher's the character we're supposed to be caring about. That just makes him look like a jerk. I wish they would have had more of a conflict because they started to touch on it towards the end after Frank saves him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was conflicted about bringing him in, but he never was until that point. Speaking of which, this is kind of a tangent and we're not going to get to talk about it later. Uh, Derek and I both paused and, like, really focused. That scene where he's just hand in the air, gun to him, and uh, Punisher it has his back to him and the camera pans out, it looks Gorgeous. It's, it's like a painted landscape of how beautiful that shot is. The blocking is great. The lighting's perfect. Everything is set up. So it reminds me of those old spaghetti westerns. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going for. Yeah. I loved it. It might have been my single favorite shot of the season. Yeah. It was you really know? cool. Because And it also shows both of those characters who they are at their core. Right? Mahoney was one of my favorite parts of the season. And considering how little he was in it, you know, it kind of tells you something. He was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right? I would love to see more of him. Because um, he really does seem like the guy who's trying to do the right thing, but he's also trying to follow the rules, and he has to come to terms with what you know Matt Murdock had to come to terms with. That sometimes that the doesn't work, yeah. right? And I liked seeing an actual law enforcement officer have to struggle with that—a guy who we know is a good person, mm-hmm. right? That there's no question, there's no well, he's going to twist at the end and be you know a bad guy. Like we know he's a good guy, and we have we see him struggle a bit. That was nice. Same with Curtis. Watching him actually put a bullet in somebody and then crying later because of it. Like, oh, yeah. God, Curtis was so good. There was a couple of moments where I was like, okay, this acting is not that great. But then there was other moments where I was like, this is a really great... Like, that actor, for some reason for me, was a little wishy-washy. Yeah, but I the scenes that. where he nailed it, he really nailed it. And that was one mm. of them for sure. That way it might be directing then because there's could be. different directors each episode. My um, favorite part about Curtis was... It, it looked like he and John Bernthal have been friends for years. Yeah. The two of them... Their chemistry was very good. Yeah, they talked together. But it wasn't season it. one also. I mean, we, yeah. you, you, they were they were great there and it carried over. Mm-hmm. I am a little sad that we never got like any resolution with his personal life by the end of this season. Yeah, she, I guess we're just supposed to assume that I she hear it was Delilah. She just left. You know, or Delia. Delia, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, just left or whatever. Yeah. But you know, I, I felt like it was a little unfair to just totally ignore his personal side of things somebody deserves a win you can't really give it to amy because she didn't really earn it you can't give it to punisher because that's not who he is he doesn't ever get a win and 
you know, Madani got her revenge, so she kind of got a small win, but Curtis really deserves, like, a huge win here, and getting Delia back or some semblance of normalcy would have been nice to see for him. Yeah, the only win we get is that basically all the bad guys die. Well, we also get the win of Micro didn't return, which means he's probably living happily exactly. with his family. Okay. Which, I mean, that's, like, that's I want to see him come back. I did too. I really want to see him come back. But then also, on the other side of me, is like for the character, I'm like, well, he deserves that to be happy with his family, and I hope he doesn't get wrapped up with Punisher again. I'm really happy that they didn't shoehorn him back in, because it would have been a shoehorn. He didn't belong anywhere in yeah. this season whatsoever, and uh, they left him with his family at such a great point that if he does get back, it does mean that something's wrong with right. his family. So I, so at this point, we're all assuming that he's good and happy and everything's good. Mm -hmm. So that, that's As nice. wonderful as Micro was. That's a, that's a win, even though it wasn't like directly <laughs> in the season. It was kind of just, you'd have to assume that after you've seen season one. So that's fair. So let's talk about the convoluted nonsense that was the uh, Nazis, the... Um, John Pilgrim. Russian okay. Russian mob. The... So, so John Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah, they, and uh, the religious people that were scared of their son being gay. So they they came out before the season came out, and it made me very excited. They said that the villain this season is going to be an alt right Christian, uh, you know, Nazi. Nazi they used essentially. the word Nazi. He was, I mean, not really. No, he was like no. he was a Christian, but there now there, there was, was nothing saying he was gonna he was racist or well. You so know, he does have a tattoo. Of uh, he has the remains of, of the an, remains of a tattoo. Of the remains of a tattoo, right? So the the German Iron Cross. So an argument could be made that at one point his character was like that. Sure, I will say that that's saying all of that ahead of the show forced people into a mindset that I don't think needed to be there. And also, I think I think that they were just doing that because they know that it's relevant to the culture we right. live in right now, and thought that that would get more people to watch. I also think. They they tried to spin it a bit more because I think Pilgrim was the goal from the very beginning. I think they added the Nazi part because so many alt-right Nazi jerk-offs associate the Punisher with themselves. They they see themselves in him. Yeah, they're they just their, going to cleanse. They get their guns with yeah. like the Punisher but, skull on mm -hmm. it and you know stuff. And like they that. wanted to disconnect from that. John Bernthal is completely against that kind of thinking. And the Punisher himself, listen to the way he talks. He is not, you know, toxic like Nazis are. So I think they wanted to disconnect, so they shoehorned in the Nazi thing way later. Because if they were going to go, you know, Punisher's fighting neo-Nazis. <laughs> I'd be in for that. Right? Sign like, me I up. I want to watch that the, shit. The thing is, if we never see the scene where Pilgrim takes his shirt off, if they just, if you don't yeah. see the tattoos, right, what else in the season has anything to do with with Nazi white supremacist stuff. Yeah, Nothing. That's, Nothing. That scene where a bunch of Nazis beat his ass down and then he kills every single one of them. But, like, even which, then... Which scene? In the bar, he goes back to that club and he gets tattled on and uh, all of his old Nazi friends beat the crap out of oh, him. Oh, oh, sorry, he, sorry, yes. He ends up killing them. But, like, I mean, other than that, though, like, the, the actual bad guys of the season, right? The, the you know, the whole... The, the parents of... Uh, the senator, that whole organization, none of them seem to have any racial motivation no. or, or anything like They're that. They're homophobic. I mean, well, yeah. clearly they are bad, horrible people. I just want to make sure we're focusing on what they are, no, they are and not, not just throwing negative things on top of them. They're not visibly racist. So, they, I mean... They're still bad, terrible yes. people with, with prejudices that are that are wrong yeah i was kind but, of expecting like american history x level yeah, right? of like gangs or something that he was up against and it was like the leader of you know a skinhead gang or something like that well like this so we, we've kind of skipped ahead a little bit so like the scene earlier on where they're at uh the police station that, with the sheriff and everything okay in the small i have town, things to say about right? that I, Please. I, what what didn't happen that I kept expecting to happen because of what I heard before the season came out was at some point I'm gonna start seeing like Confederate flags or people in like KKK outfits out in this group of guys in the forest and nothing ever happens. They're just bad people with guns, 
They're right? all mercenaries. Yeah, they're just hired and guns. And bounty hunters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, a side note of that scene. Yeah, let's talk about that. I, I really loved that scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought it was really good for early on. I mean, you knew that the Punisher was a badass, but as, in terms of like his military prowess, in terms of like tactical, mm-hmm. you didn't really get to see that until... Um, that get, they start getting shot up and everybody's focused on the front door and Punisher says something like, that's a distraction, they're coming in the back door. Um, and then they do come in the back yeah. door and, and people get screwed over, you know, they get shot and surprised and it's a huge deal. Um, and then the Punisher going outside and like, you know, methodically with one people. hand because his other hand's all screwed up, you know, just going through and being very Punisher-y. Like, that reminds me of the scene from the f- first season where they're out in the woods and yes. he's like hunting the special forces team. Yeah. That, I mean, it was, I don't know if you saw that one, but that was a great scene too. But yeah, yeah, I loved that. That was, that was for me, like high level Punisher, you know, in terms of the best stuff. No, the, at, the, the, this police station stuff was some of the better stuff. The also, the way he was dealing season. with the kid that got shot. Really good yes. battle. When he's episode. like, "Do you want to yes. die here, son?" and he's like, "He's very caring about this guy." Because mm-hmm. well, it's, it's showing again, like he doesn't want any good people to die. Right. Right. He doesn't want them in his way either. But he right. doesn't want any of them to die. Right. Uh, but you're right. It's you know having basically taking over that situation, and by the end of it, having the sheriff just let him walk around with a gun, <laughs> all that yeah. type of stuff. Like it really won him sh- over. Right. Exactly. And it showed the kind of power that he brings. And I mean, there's a couple like just cool moments like the first shot he really takes uh you know is you know from the roof is to not blow up the molotov cocktail right, right? that was like, awesome. that guy's great it. it's it's a cool cinematic moment and right. going through the forest like it was it was pretty neat you know uh, i was kind of disappointed when madani showed up in the helicopter yeah <laughs> um but that was one of the better early moments yeah, i agree that scene really stood out to me it might even be part of my favorite part of the whole season i really mm-hmm. liked that scene i don't know why something about it just really read punisher mm-hmm. to me and i really enjoyed it well, you, I think, Ray, you said it for me. It was kind of like a bottle episode. It was. Right? It's all in one location. It's a one true. set group of people. It's a very specific story. It was story. very character establishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you got to see the really good side of Punisher. Because uh, before that, you got to see the interactions with the girl, but it, it really wasn't that good. And you got to see with Beth, but that was when he was not really being Punisher, you right. know? So this was, like, military Punisher mode. Right. He's telling this mm-hmm. kid what he needs to do, you know, if he wants to live. It was also very reminiscent of Apocalypse films. Anytime I've seen, you know, zombie films, they all hold themselves up and prepare for the horde. And it it was good. There was great dialogue. Everybody got a chance to speak. You know, Mm -hmm. nobody was just a background actor for a while. So I that was one of my more favorite episodes, I guess. I enjoyed it. To point out something, when I brought up the violence thing earlier, like this scene, you know, doesn't, yeah, doesn't like, go I past that violence. line for me, right? Like, yeah, it's 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 gun stuff. It's showing his tactical military training. It's showing his mind. It's showing his strength. You know, yes, lots of people are dying and there's blood and it's intense and it's, it is violent, but it doesn't go to that level that we'll get to later that yeah. I just felt like was over the top. This scene didn't do, this episode didn't do that. I think that's a good segue. So I want to transfer over here to uh, the scene in the Russian gym. Sure. Because when it starts, I love it. We've all like handled weights before. We know how heavy they can be. We know if you take one to somebody's head, it would knock them out or kill them or something like that. And traumatic brain injury for sure. It, yeah, it starts very creatively. They make use of the entire environment and it's really well choreographed. It crossed that line of too much where he is hitting the guy, the final part, in the face over and over again with this free weight, and nobody's going down. Like, he's been hurt multiple times at this point and should be on the ground himself. Like, he, we've talked about it. He's not a superhuman. He doesn't have powers. He has tactical skills and a can-do attitude, and that's that's about it. And, like, <laughs> I know, it's very Boy Scouty, but, no, it's true. I mean, he never gives up. And in this case, like, he hit him, I counted, nine times to the face with this. The guy's still alive, and I have no idea how. Like, two hits to the face would have killed most people. Like, it, it was all... It, it, was, just, it was a little too graphic. Like, I got the point. I get it. And it's all it's in your five. <laughs> it's in your face. You know they show the injury and things like that. And it, it that was 
kind of when it all clicked to me that a few characters are not human beings in this season. Frank, Pilgrim, Billy, it's and a minimum. It's not just this season. Okay. Yeah, but, last season was like that too. But, you know, like I said, like you guys mentioned, like this is what I had to go off of. And the three of them take more hits and injuries and shots and cuts and whatever that it's those scenes that I used to appreciate on maybe Daredevil or something like that started to lose me because they ceased to be realistic anymore. And unlike your normal superhero movies, they're, because this is what it is, it was so gory and, and, and bloody that I just like was just kind of not interested. So I'm going to go on the opposite end of both of you and say that The Punisher is not a superhero, and you're absolutely right about that. But something about The Punisher in the comic books, and even in season one that they established, is that even if he's dying and he's like taking his last breath, he's going to get the job done because right. that's what he does. It's the can-do attitude. For sure. I mean, that's kind of a chipper way of putting something that's more like he's bleeding out, but he's going to put a knife through this person's eyeball no matter what, even if his body is not yeah. physically able to. I, like, I get that it's unbelievable. He is, might as well be superhuman in terms of uh, what he can, the abuse he can take. But so is Daredevil. You said you could deal mm -hmm. with Daredevil better, but Daredevil in the first season when he's fighting Nobu, he gets completely eviscerated. I said, I, I, I said it's better. It's pretty messed up. Like, I said better. That fight with Nobu made me cringe more than, That's maybe right. not everything in The Punisher, but I mean, more than a lot. Sure, but he, and I'm not saying that Daredevil is not guilty of this from time to time, but Matt Murdock always at least appeared to be hurt. When these things were over, Punisher so, didn't appear to, to be hurt to you. To yeah, I mean, he couldn't use extent. his right hand for uh, the first, or second, third, fourth, and fifth episode. Yeah, but how much time does this season cover? A few weeks. That doesn't heal Maybe? a broken hand. No, it doesn't. Okay, like at some point he's like, nah, it's fine. Right? Well, I mean, like, the thing about the Punisher, and even they did see season one too, you can back me up on this, is that mm -hmm. he gets fucked up all the time and he never heals. Like he never I, is fully healed. I know. So here, yeah. here's the thing: it's not just Frank though. It's the three main guys, right? It's which are Frank, all ex military, and, like, and Billy. But the thing, the thing is, though, is that when it's everybody of significance, then well, it like, just feels. The thing is, uh, Amy shoots Pilgrim in the leg with a shotgun. He is pulling out. Yeah, and that was brutal. But was he doesn't have a limp it was after. Awesome. He doesn't have a limp after, like not even a he's limp. Like, really, that was... he, he has a little limp I mean, for like <sighs> right after that, but as soon as he starts fighting Frank again, he's it's forgotten about that pain and he's into it. So like the thing is like you want to use the well, you know, he just when they're when they're really it's focused, adrenaline. they can just push through everything. It's like I feel like there's got to be. Are you be making a fun of me with that? Video. Like, come on, I, I know that's what I said, he but that's what he is in the voice. comic books. <laughs> like that's the, you're, that, you're not the only one to say that type of thing. So I'm not directing it at you only. I was the one that literally just said that. You're locking eyes with him. Yeah. Look. It. It gets to be too much for me to take seriously. I want there to be a happy like, medium, too. Like, I want five hits to the face instead of nine, and you pan away. Well, I thought that was important. But, he loses control of his temper multiple times in the season, and that was one of them, you know? Like, Another the, one was when he killed the three, or killed the the three girls. The pedophile was a much, much better example of that. He goes to do the pictures, and oh. he punches him in the face multiple times, and he was going to shoot him. And I loved See, I Amy's that, reaction. I thought that was a worse example because really? he, Man, in you the don't first want to season, hit pedophiles in the face. Sure, but I, in the first season, he straight up kills a pedophile. He goes in to buy the gun. Well, what was it, that there? We'll see. Amy, does, Amy does stop him. Sure, but and then like they burn the place down. He literally <laughs> turns around and locks the door behind him, and sh and and it's implied that he kills this other pedophile. So I mean, like, so here, come my, on. here's here's more of my point then. Towards the end, when it's the final showdown between Pilgrim and Frank. <laughs> Okay, at we're the trailer. at the trailer, okay? And, like, they're hitting each other and They're with, already both massively wounded. Like, I mean, Pilgrim's punching Frank in the face multiple times with a giant thick chain fist. Frank's smacking him in the face with an air tank. Like, these things shouldn't hurt a person, shouldn't make a person dizzy. They should kill a person, right? right? This isn't... This isn't willpower anymore and this they're is not biology. at 100 percent by any means right i mean pilgrim should have bled out days ago this isn't you know at some point there's just no more blood your body still has to produce it right like you just run he out had at some a point. lot of orange shoes you know so like that's true it just that's medically not a thing it just got to be too much it got to be like they would go through and 
just do a spray of bullets and 15 people are just dead instantly from a single bullet somewhere. But these guys could take three, four, five shots and then just go Except have a rumble. Billy game. died because of two bullets. At the very, but... three, at the very, very end of the season, after the doctor stole his money and ran away, so he didn't have, you know, any way to patch any of it up, right? But he, pro- he might have survived if he had gotten medical care and he had been taken to a hospital. You know, he had been shot multiple times over the course of the season. So let's talk about the insanity that is Billy Russo and his beautiful fucking face. I'm just going to lead this off with, <laughs> if you've seen, I know you haven't seen the end of season one, but what happened at the end of season one, that oh, was, all, there's was a ton of flashbacks. Yeah, get, they oh, yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, like even in the, sh- in the actual show, it was, it was like, I, it was one time that made me really go, holy fucking violence, man. And I don't do that very often. But when he's dragging his face across that mirror, I'm like, hey. anyway, yeah. they were like, oh, you're so ugly now, ugly face boy. But he has like a tiny stitch right here and like a little yeah. one up here. It's like, oh, come on. Like, we're really supposed to buy that this guy is goes from male model to like hideous beast because he has like, a couple of scars here. If anything, women and will want him more now because he looks more badass. Oh, I'm going to say something that I never thought I'd ever say in my entire life. You want to have sex with Jigsaw no. more once he's had his No, scars. no, no, oh, no. Okay. Ben Barnes is a very attractive man and I've thought this for years. But Punisher Warzone did Jigsaw's face better. <laughs> like, I never thought Punisher Warzone would be good compared to this, but... Man, Dominic West looked like he was a patchwork doll. And Ben Barnes said he's got a couple rough scars. Couple ouchies. You don't get to see his face for a while. He's got the mask right. on. Right. Why so, are you wearing this mask, dude? Like, your face is barely hurt. So, in my head, like, they're building this up. This better look fucking good. And then I'm like, oh. I mean, I mean I'm sure it hurt. But, you yeah. know, like, and also, like, I, I normally hate amnesia storylines. Like, I think it's kind of lazy writing most yeah. of the time. But I think in this case, both of the villains were kind of a mirror of Frank in a way. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And I think that the amnesia for uh, for Billy was pretty... I mean, it was kind of necessary. If they had... I don't know. They, they played it the right way, I think. I had zero problems with the amnesia. I thought it worked well. I liked the idea of this guy thinking every that they're all best friends and buddies and brothers, and he doesn't know this stuff. Now, it started to lose me a little bit later when like people are telling him what he did, and he just refuses to believe it, but he also knows he doesn't remember what happened. Right. So like the fact that he's not even willing to pause for a moment and think about it was a little frustrating. My problem is, like throughout this whole thing, they never let this patient get access to the internet he could have read his wikipedia or the news like amy reads about the punisher and in five minutes be more informed than what people told him like that's just completely bonkers to me he gets a chess set and a diary but he can't have the internet for five minutes like i mean maybe just just because of what he was you know uh, being charged with Oh, what yeah, once he say? leaves, yeah, like, once he, he's he at Jamont's Google's? apartment and everything, yeah, that, that's a fair He point. was also very, was he weirdly thin this season? Was that because his character yeah, was supposed to be malnourished? I don't or? know. So. Like, there's no way that a guy that looks yeah. like this is going to be able to stand up to John Bernthal, even if he's no. injured. But like, that was, John, that was part of the problem, too. Right? Like, the Pilgrim, I, I can believe the Pilgrim. They one-on-one. He, that's like, true. The, well, it Pilgrim was all. Was yeah, I actually, like, I, that actor looked so familiar to me, and I was trying to figure out who he was. And he was in the Dark Knight or the Dark Knight Rises or something, but I couldn't put my finger on what character he played in that, so I still don't really know. But he was—I thought he was wonderful. We never really discussed him as an actor, but I thought he was great. Well, as the Pilgrim, I want to get, was good. Was good. I want to get to that. Um, well, we're but getting low on. Yeah, I know. No, but we're it's good. Fine. We're gonna talk. Uh, about but how we're before wrong. we move on from like the, the the Billy thing in the beginning of the show, like to, to kind of talk more about how like in this season the three main guys kind of seem to be somewhat superhuman. You also have. This se- the, the end of last season is Billy getting his face completely bashed in, should probably kill a Multiple person. Multiple times, yeah. But Donnie getting shot in the head should probably kill a person. And Curtis getting shot in the face. <laughs> it's like you got three people who really, on any given day, one of them should have been dead. Well, and the Punisher... The yeah, way it well, too. Okay. I mean, he yeah, was yeah, he sure. was destroyed. Yeah. Sure, but so we know he's not going to die in season one, right? But like somebody needed to die. Here's and the I thing. know that that would suck, it's, but it honestly, with seeing both seasons, seeing how they play out, it should have been Madonna. Yeah, absolutely. As much as I loved her in the first season, that would have given her a very tragic ending. It also wouldn't have made her character so painful to watch this season. 
Then there's no like crazy revenge story going on in the background. Russo, which I wanted Jigsaw to be the villain in season three. three. We I, both talked yeah, about that. Because I, give him a season to stew and kind of figure mm-hmm. his shit out and give us another villain before you bring him back. Do the Wilson Fisk thing. Sure. Chill on Anything them. would have been fine. Yeah. I just, yeah, they should have saved him for season three. Well, I think they could have spent more time on the, the Pilgrim side of things because right. I found myself most of the season not really understanding why I should care much about it. Yeah, right? he has a sick wife and like... And like know, he was, he's reformed in some way, but we're not really entirely sure Do we know his history? Do we ever find out like his no, history? No, we know he was a bad guy in yeah, that Yeah, that's all we really and know. And then something changed. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, at the end of the season, I'm making some guesses and I'm putting together, you know, maybe, the, maybe those people made his wife sick as a way to force them into a mm-hmm. situation or Knowing or that he, uh, he was they, bad. That he had know, these skills, bad, yeah. right? Like, I'm I don't know. I'm sitting here waiting for a connection for something and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And episode seven, Curtis is like, so what does Billy have to do with this pilgrim guy? And Punisher's like, absolutely nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, if they don't have a connection, like, what the hell? Like, like that's not good. Right. <laughs> Jigsaw know? should not have been in this season. Madani should have died at the end of last season. And this one should have been alt-right Nazis with more pilgrim background. We should have gotten the whole thing. We should have gotten why his wife is sick. Why he had to change his complete identity from Robert to John. could have made John. him way more sympathetic with uh-huh. the kids, too. They didn't really play up the kids at all. Well, that's the problem. Because literally the very, very end of this season, the very end... I actually really liked quite a bit. I thought it was super interesting the way some of that was tied up at the end. But it was, you know, the last episode yeah. of a 13 episode season. I love where, that kids you know, like pull on Frank's heartstrings. Give the, give us more of that throughout the whole thing. Make him side step and second guess his activities because children are involved to some tangential degree. Well, it makes these people human, right? Mm-hmm. It makes Pilgrim human right that he is willing to do whatever it takes to protect his kids too that's something that at least as other human beings we can relate to we can understand conceptually what that means what our parents may have wanted would have done for us or something like that so see that's where when you were talking about how these characters are all superhuman it that's where they they have their individual things that they draw that willpower from and now granted we didn't find out pilgrims until like the very end that's the problem but but now then you learn that he's fighting to keep his kids alive right which is a huge you and that's know. a big deal sure right but it's hard when you're when you're watching you know 12 hours of content it's hard to then retroactively go back and go well seven hours ago then that makes a lot more sense sure. I mean, that's fair yeah. i just i mean that's i assume why, there had the to be something going on but yeah i mean it's that i can understand it to an extent, but I feel like it kind of wrapped it up in a way that kind of explained it. But it, it's sort of because then the thing is like, well, if his wife hadn't died, you know, then is he fighting for her still, or is it still just his employment? Like I feel like his motives should have shifted when she died. And there's a scene where you get the idea that they did. Yeah. Right? But again, it's not really explained. We're left to kind of guess that that was the whole point of him trashing the room was his now understanding that his kids are trapped. Right? But he was still doing all this bad stuff before that. So is he just a mercenary up until that point and now it's personal but he was still doing incredible things before that point right so that that was kind of where things fell apart it was nothing against the actor i actually thought he was fantastic um i thought he was a, a great villain great antagonist um he, having that like super calm demeanor but obviously clearly uh tactful and yeah, he like never yelled he never you know it was no matter what happened, he was always completely level-headed. That that made him the most creepy, oh, the most yeah. scary character. Because, like... People have emotions. They yell. Like, at one point, Punisher was barking at somebody. Like, no, he... Th- that's a Punisher thing. Like, yeah, he does, it, it totally... This John it's, Bernthal Punisher thing. It, like, it's he, a John Bernthal thing. He did that in Walking Dead. Yeah, like... And, but it suits the he character. Bark. It's his Batman voice. <laughs> It suits it suits the character of the Punisher. He just can't contain the rage, and that's how yeah. it comes he, out. He did the "Where is me?" You know, uh, Christian Bale growl. He did like, a couple perfectly. times. It was funny. Uh, but, uh, but I buy it a lot more from the Punisher I than do I do too. from Christian no, Bale. That's fair. But I thought the Pilgrim was a was a much better villain to watch, a more interesting villain to watch than Billy, because Billy was so unhinged. And the Schultzes. It's really easy for me to hate rich white people at this point, you know. Well, they were just awful. Right, right? that's my point, 
though. Like, go balls to the wall with these guys. Put all your eggs in this basket that's clearly better fleshed out, more interesting, something new we haven't seen from the Punisher. Did it bother you guys at all? This is not as tangential to what we were just talking about, but uh, the scene where he go, where the Punisher and the girl go into where the two rich white people are. At the end. Yeah, and he shoots her in the head. And, uh, and I, th- I think I was about goes, to bring this up. When he says, uh, You're, this bitch made her, made her decision, you know, like that seems super out of character for the Punisher to like call her a bitch, you know, uh, in this scene. I don't know. That really bothered was, me. Though. She was, sure. But like, and he I hasn't done that. I didn't want to see Amy get stabbed. I really didn't. Like they kept sh- hinting that that was what her next play yeah. was. And maybe it would have been cool to see her get, grab the knife. And then Punisher's hands here, and then he shoots her or something like no, that. I want to see him shoot a shot was, through her hand and into her head. I was too distracted that would have been cool. when the husband calls the calls Frank a murdering bastard. <laughs> yeah, he's right? so <laughs> angry, and like, but that's all, supposed to show you how separated he is from what's what's actually happening. Because he's never actually murdered; yeah. he's only paid for other people to. Here's murder. the thing that that comes off. Like the dumbest line in the entire show. Cor- Cor- <laughs> I don't know how Corbin Burnson still gets jobs. Like he is not the best actor. Like go back to doing major league films. <laughs> like, right. Like here's the thing. He may not be murdering people, but he is blackmailing a guy with his own children. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like so, I'm supposed to sit there, this guy, and he's like, Are "You murdering bastard!" I'm not what supposed thing? to. La- I literally laugh. I think. Out loud I think that's that the reaction they wanted. Like I don't think that was. That was an accident. We That's know that this guy's this guy's a, and we're an idiot. not supposed to have any sympathy for these yeah. people. Like oh. eventually, you're supposed to have sympathy for Pilgrim, not right. towards the beginning. And I don't need to have sympathy for them, but give me then the cocky bad guy trope, where you know he's I'm not surprised you made it here, kind of bullshit. The James Bond thing or something. Don't don't give me you a, want a, a cat clear... on your lap. Sure, but don't <laughs> give me a clearly moronic line. Hair. I don't care. Okay. Mr. Like Bigglesworth, Mr. Bigglesworth is fine. Well, Mr. Bigglesworth <laughs> has hair in the beginning and loses it Ooh, later, so... It's interesting. Uh, no, I just... It, the line just, just came off so disconnected from everything that I couldn't buy it for That whole instant. scene, yeah, had some weird writing for me. I I love when people... It, May, it, when, when the Punisher makes them kill themselves. Forced suicide in movies is like the biggest power play. Yeah. It's big dick energy. And the, and the Punisher, so like, like, the Punisher like, does that. He <laughs> was, yeah. It, it was just interesting and new. I like when things are new, you know? I, I was loving the gym scene up until the very last point. I, st- I, mean, I like the gym scene fine. all the way through it. That's fine. I, I don't care about the violence. The, 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 gym, scene. Oh, the gym scene. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but so, what was the conversation then in the junkyard r- between Pilgrim and Frank? You know, yeah, he, Pilgrim says, "Don't you know, make sure my you know you don't hurt my kids or whatever." And Frank's like, "Oh, you've got kids. I love my Martha. Kids. Oh, we love kids. <laughs> no, we, should, we should go kill them. Do we just become best friends?" And then that's the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Like that that was a little weird for me. It did no, sh- it was very I, reminiscent of the BBS scene <laughs> that everybody makes fun of. That's all it was though. He said the one word that would have kept right. him from if killing. If he hadn't said anything about his kids, he would have gotten his head blown off. Right. I would have made a similar request though, like don't go after my family. Now I like that the two of them team up at the end because it shows who Pilgrim really is, who we didn't understand for ninety percent of this season. Right? He's a guy who had a bad life really tried to be a better person and was blackmailed into a situation where his kids could die right i i can feel bad for somebody like that i'm not gonna forgive them of everything that they've done but i can feel bad for that person i completely suspected that it was the schultz's fault that rebecca was sick that's what i kind of came up i mean it's definitely implied but yeah they they never never flat out said it but that's also part of the problem though right is you know don't 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 lay these seeds if we're never going to find out the answer to that, right? I want to know what that was all about. See, Why... so I think, I think leading into this, that that I think they changed the ending of the season. Really? Based on, the, like, sense. the way that things wrapped up made it seem like they were trying to pretty much clean up every loose end. There's, like, maybe one still out there, this, the psychologist or whatever, whatever she is, still oh, alive, yeah. still in love with Billy, clearly. But she, she that that was like the only man. loose end really at the end of the season. It seemed like they were trying to wrap everything up, and it seemed very rushed right That's at the very end. So I'm thinking that they had like gotten word of all these shows getting canceled, or that they were likely to get canceled, and so they rushed in and made some changes at the very last minute. Because 
I mean, I don't know. There were some decisions made. Not that they were bad, but they definitely seemed like they were rushed decisions. I think that's fair. I, I didn't notice it at the time, but that makes sense. I I liked how it was wrapped up, though. I liked... So, so did you You hate... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you like the way Billy was ended? Yeah. So there was a lot yes. of people that had a problem with well, the Punisher not listening to his monologue, but I, I personally thought that it ended the perfect way. It makes the most sense. Everybody, Madani, Curtis, and Punisher, and Frank said multiple times throughout the season, you should have just finished it. You should have just taken the shot. You shouldn't have let him live. You should have made sure he was put down. Yeah. And he did. He didn't let him finish. He didn't, you know, have this great ironic monologue. No. No, no, no. He he just finished it. He didn't earn it. that. Yeah. Look, in the, my opinion. That was, was, I agree. Yeah. I, Billy was insufferable this season. Yeah. The stupid gang he had, the setting Frank up with the three dead women already. Oh, I really need to talk about that scene, actually. <sighs> Do it. Um, so While we're here. Yeah, while, while we're on it. Um, so, okay. I'll so, Bill, Billy killed those women, so Frank didn't actually do it, and he still gets to be the good guy, right? However, Frank did shoot blindly through those windows, so if Billy hadn't done it, Frank would have done it. Yeah. Right? That's so the point. The, but, but it's a technicality. He be, he stays a good guy on a technicality. Yeah. Well, those three women probably wouldn't have... They wouldn't have necessarily been up there, like, hanging out where he could shoot them. They probably would have been on the floor or something. Maybe, but... but the whole point is, you know, he's off the hook because Billy set him up and Billy really killed him. When, really, the actions that he took very well could have resulted in their death. And the fact that it didn't is just a straight-up technicality. See, I don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem with, like, the next episode after that happens. And he's like, I'm clear. I, I didn't kill him. He's blindly firing through walls at Pilgrim. Yeah. Like, he didn't learn anything about it. In a hotel that clearly has people Yeah, in. and they're running out, but none of them got hit. Like, there was some... This, I, this, the showrunner was different this season, and it yeah. definitely showed. Um, and I think that some of the... There were some major problems like that that I had. The, I think Frank's character development was not nearly as... It was very muddy. Where especially with the last scene of the of the whole season. Oh yes, because um, I think this what we're talking about right now ties into that last season though, right? Because he busts into this barn where there's clearly two gangs doing something, and he just mows them all have been down. Nazis, like, and they were, like, kids. they were like they were like kids. They're, yeah, they're young like, guys. Like you're telling me, every single one of them deserved to die. They're early twenties. Like maybe they're drug dealers. They have turf wars and shit. Like why couldn't they have been Nazis? Like there's no way he knows they that every been... one of those thirty people deserved to die. There's no way he knows that. So that that scene was a hundred percent comic book. Like yeah. we're just jerking you off here. Yeah, absolutely. Up. That's what it was. A I completely was... clean suit, him rejecting his yeah. CIA job. Yeah. I was talking to Doc Rev earlier about this, who's usually in our chat. Well, hasn't been for a little while, but anyway, <laughs> uh, he 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 said, "Well, would you have been happier if it was a bunch of like old guys?" I was like, "Yeah, if it was like a bunch of old like mafia guys, I would have been way better." It's like the his introduction in season two of Daredevil when it's like a meeting of the mafia right, when he I'd murders like the restaurant. entire group. Yeah, I'm like, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But when it's a bunch of kids and you literally just spent the season talking about how this one reminded you of your daughter and like mm -hmm. you loved her. The last scene with the two of them was really good, by the way. At the, at at the, the bus, bus station? station. Mm -hmm. It was. It and was... also the scene he had with Karen in the hospital. I know it seemed like you didn't yeah. necessarily love Karen in this, but it, I, no, that no, no. scene was great. I, I love Karen and Frank's chemistry. I love when they talk. I actually think Karen is better suited for this show than she is Daredevil Agreed. at this point. So I, I want her in this. Um, I was making a joke because she's been in a few oh, other okay. seasons and they seem to just put her in for fun. Um, side note, I will also exchange my shoes for high up favors with um, law enforcement officers. <laughs> and the more that, that was weird. I don't um, even care. You can have my shoes. <laughs> so so I, I think that's kind of the end just kind of shows that he hasn't learned a damn thing. And the existential crisis that he supposedly went through a couple episodes ago was total bullshit. You know, the last scene basically killed that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it basically ruined that. If if they did by some miracle get another season, then I would pretty much guess they're just gonna forget that it they just, did that scene. Or they'll have to do something to explain why it's okay that he killed all those right. people, right? They're going to have to do the work now. Because we just saw him murder a bunch of young people in a barn who were not near other people. They're not near civilians. Clearly they all had guns, right? These are not the best people in the world. But, you know, I'm not... I'm not okay. The whole point was that not everybody deserves to die. Right. Right? They were five seconds away from murdering each other anyway, so you might as well just let them do it. it was, you know? I mean, that's an argument that can be made, too, I suppose. Out of context... 
as a Punisher fan, that was a really cool looking scene. The I way it was shot, shot well. the, yeah. him like sweeping the thing back and pulling the two guns out, like two huge guns that the most people would use with two clean, two so hands. you know he got a new one yeah. and invested in like, it. And as a Punisher it. fan, that's clearly like they were literally just masturbating their fans for it him. That's all it was. It just been a completely different group instead of It just of didn't make sense games. with yeah. this. Yeah, like it I, better. I would have preferred like uh, a hate crime. We could have seen him mow down people for or yeah that's something that just happened the other day to a star from empire so you know we that's real life violence sure there are gang and turf wars all the time but these like the youngest those were probably 17 year olds oldest maybe like 25 and in between like it was eh. yeah it was weird they still could have been scared straight well, and, and the thing is, just because those guys had guns doesn't mean they've ever used them, doesn't mean they've ever killed anybody, doesn't mean that they deserve to die. We don't know what they did, right? And, you know, to your point, that is a really cool, well-shot scene. It's technically well. I don't think there's really any technical problems with this season. I don't, I don't recall anything that happened where I was like, wow, that looked really bad. Yeah. I, I don't recall anything like that. The action scenes, most of the action scenes were very interesting to watch. The despite work. The, Yeah, and in the, in the first season had that, too, where, like, mm-hmm. the realistic injuries yeah uh, i mean they they're uh, they're they don't feel good to look at like they're they make intense, you uncomfortable the bruising like Con- all over their face at the end consistent yeah. yes right especially for frank who has a lot of little cuts i mean good size cuts right yeah. but he's got a lot of the little, little for him place. but good size for normal people but they're right? visible they're all over his face now every once in a while he'll get like shanked in the leg or something and they don't really have, well you can like, oh, punisher is the only one you could say that about yeah. where it's like it's not a big deal well like they just put on a new pair of pants and you don't see the wound anymore but on his face they have to make sure so you know the makeup artist really did their work and it's not easy and no maintained but they did that they did a great job of that in daredevil season mm-hmm. two with him and they did a great job in that in his first season and now this season also so i definitely think that their makeup work is probably the best in the in the netflix mcu for sure like yeah. they did a great job yeah any of the technical work on the show I thought was very good just across the board I think the showrunner this season was a problem I agree it would have been a much tighter more interesting season with the just the pilgrim storyline removing Jigsaw and Dumont and Madani would have saved a lot of issues that popped up it was competing storylines and you couldn't care for both so you just kind of half cared for both instead i mean i would have been okay if they had had like small little bits of billy like like small sessions throughout the season where he never okay. leaves the hospital right he still never really learns who he is but it's his sure his just set him up for season three exactly like, that would have been fun right. so we don't forget where you know, wilson fisk is in season two you know, something like that one. right and you can have like you know maybe every third episode or something there's another like counseling session and you learn a little bit more about where where he is mentally yeah right i think that would have been interesting but Pilgrim, yeah, I would have loved a more fleshed out part of that story. He could have easily been on the tier with Kilgrave and, uh, Fisk. and Fisk, uh, if they had given him more, that actor was clearly capable. Clearly. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they had given him more to work with, he could have been a very like top tier villain for the MCU. I'm always really impressed when people change their entire voice. Like they don't just slap on an accent, but they change it. I watched an interview with Josh Stewart earlier just to see if that was his real voice definitely not it, it no and it was really like cool. super subdued and mm-hmm. no matter what was going on around him and it's probably a very difficult thing to act you know i if i'm getting worked up in something my <laughs> voice changes clearly and to control that seems you're like it'd be talking difficult. about a podcast you know here <laughs> right exactly you're not under incredible physical duress right yeah so yeah yeah i thought he was phenomenal from mm-hmm. an acting perspective better than billy and billy was great in the first that's the, that's the worst part is like he didn't have you believed he was with. frank's friend and like you believed that all this stuff was going on and i i was really upset with the whole veteran storyline we all have friends that are vets the first season's veteran storyline was so, so good and it was so respectful and relevant mm-hmm. and te- and went into the social issues but this one it was all very superficial I didn't want to see these guys who were down on their luck already turn into these asshole proud boys who murdered people and stole stuff. Like Yeah, they just we, flipped the switch and could instantly kill civilians exactly. and be okay with like, it. 
We, we already have a problem with ignoring our, our veterans' issues when they come back and, you know, they don't have housing or livelihoods or... Medical care. Yeah, so, like, why? Why make it worse here? And I, it just didn't portray them in a way that I thought was interesting flattering. or yeah. flattering. Or... I, th- I think the problem was Billy, though, because Billy, at no, at no point did he seem level-headed enough to even be manipulative. He just seemed Crazy. like a raving nut the entire yeah. time. That's true. So, like, maybe you could have somebody who was just so charismatic, so intelligent. Which he, he manip- was in season, season one. one. Yeah. And he could manipulate these guys into thinking this is the right thing to do, right? That's one thing. That's not what this was. No. This was a nut who just happened to be able to get his hands on a bunch of weaponry somehow. Yeah. With, with, I mean, I don't, I'm not entirely sure how since he wouldn't have any money at this point. They but didn't really explain how he got all the crazy they got, machine guns. They got high artillery. quality equipment, yeah. you know, throughout this season. It shows how they got the money. Maybe they just used some of the money for the, the weapons. I don't I know. Mean, maybe, but they had to have weapons to, to get the money yeah. the first time. So, I don't know. We're but, in a terrible loop. I know. So, <laughs> anyway. Anything else, guys? I think we covered, like, everything. Yeah. I yeah. think we covered most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. We'll definitely be talking about it again in the next couple of weeks just because we... Whether it gets canceled. Exactly. Or... Yeah. We'll give you an update. Punisher Gate 2019, oh I guess. How many gates do we need? All the gates. All the gates. I, I, I do want to throw out... I, I joked about this in chat, but that computer that Amy uses at the store... Oh, my God. Like if you're gonna, Derek look, look, look! If you're gonna do that scene and you're gonna have her questions be technical questions about a computer, you have to at least make it seem realistic. And spending a grand in 2018, 2019 on a on a 1.8 gigahertz processor, no. it's just like it's just not like just do your homework a little bit yeah. if that's what you're gonna do. Or, well, it's a good thing she didn't buy it. <laughs> I know. It was well, just clearly the person she was talking to is not that well versed in computers because it kept having to go ask somebody about it. So yeah. uh, I think that <laughs> it worked in that the scene, but Derek it was weird. Too. He was like, "That would have been written on the label." Yeah. Like, <gasps> why not just like have her be looking at a computer? I mean, it worked in Winter Soldier. It's true, right? They just went to a store and used a computer for a few minutes. Like all she's doing is googling. So, so I did read a review where they said that they thought that um, the little girl was kind of sexualized too much. Did you guys think that at all? So they never I didn't really. Did you Amy? Yeah. How? But how old was she supposed to be? Like, I was I guessing like was 15 eight... or 16. Oh, no, no. I figured she was 18, 19. The sheriff made a joke at the police station that even if he averaged out all the ages of her personas, she'd still be 18 oh, okay. or, or 19. It was one of the Fair two. Enough. Right. So in my head, she's probably in her young 20s. Yeah, maybe she's twenty, twenty one, maybe. The only time she was sex sex sexualized was the pervert scene, and that was very much on purpose. Yeah. But like every other time, she's wearing jeans and a t shirt. Like, if you're gonna sexualize a woman like that just because she has a female body, then you know that's ninety percent of the women out there in America wearing jeans and t shirts. So yeah, I read that review before I watched the season mm-hmm. and I was like waiting for it the whole time. I'm like, it when is happens. this thing? Yeah, and it never happened. So I was like, all right, whatever. I don't know what this person saw. But... And like, yeah, Frank keeps calling her kid and everyone's looking for the kid or the girl or whatever. But I don't think she's supposed to be a minor. I really don't. After yeah. watching this season. She might say that she's 16 early on in the show, and that's what people have gravitated towards, but other than that sentence, none of that seems to be accurate. There's no way to know yeah. what they had. I think it was left ambiguous on the, purpose. The actress is definitely older than 16. Yeah. Otherwise, she wouldn't legally be able to do some of those things on set. Mm-hmm. So. True. All right, guys, I think that's going to wrap us up for this evening. Of course, you can join us every Tuesday on Twitch for uh our live podcast and you know what are we doing next week isn't it our dceu isn't that what we're doing am i wrong i don't know that's why i was asking I'll oh pull, my god I'll you write the here. schedule i don't know i don't I'll pull it I got everything it. i got it right here yes next week is our dceu it's our wonder woman yes episode so for those of you who don't know we started with man of steel we diverged after bvs and did our own justice league dark We've done our own Shazam, we've done a Justice League, and now we're doing a Wonder Woman movie yes. pitch. So you can go out to that playlist that we put together out on the website if you want to watch Lord those in order. I need to listen to them all because <laughs> you guys won't. True. Good point. 
so I'll, <laughs> I'll have to listen to five hours of content over the next couple of weeks. And we appreciate it, Rachel. Yes, thank you. And, and then, we have too many course, video games to play to do that kind of You thing. can download or stream our podcast every Friday morning on all podcast outlets. You Except can, Spotify. <laughs> you can check Hilarious. our website out at heroespodcast.com for these new playlists. You can get the links for all of our uh, episodes up there as well. You can check out all of our other shows. We currently have... There's four shows. Four shows total. Four shows, yeah. yeah. I, I was going to say four others, three others. I don't know. We've got many in the works that are coming down the pipeline for 2019. So, so check many. that out later. So many. Many, many. Uh, Ryan, you can find at Buster Props on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Sure. Do the other way around. Facebook, <laughs> the Instagram, then Twitter. Yeah. Derek, you can find at the Star Trek Dude on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And I am Siren Ray on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We also, as a collective, have a Patreon. It keeps us with updated equipment and able to bring you more shows donate whatever you can to support us or more than you can that's okay too <laughs> we won't judge yeah and we probably won't know that you're doing Just, that but we appreciate it if you like our stuff <laughs> throw a dollar here and there it would really uh help us along we'd appreciate it yeah you can you uh, if you become a patron you can join our exclusive patron lounge on slack which could desperately use some fun conversation we do so, shout out it's always popping it's, it's like the club. Uh, entertainment 720 started but basically so. you get to talk to all the hosts on the heroes podcast network and we would love to talk to you guys about that absolutely don't forget to follow this show on twitter though at screen heroes pod mm -hmm. we've been trying to post a little bit more we've done a couple of polls things like that so please go follow us all right, guys, that's going to wrap us up for tonight. See you next week. Love you. Bye.